Wow, the AI has learned the ultimate game-breaking strategy. It hits the ball in the exact perfect position to get it in an infinite loop. In the last video, I mentioned I was going to show you how to improve our breakout AI. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I did that. In the last video, I mentioned we were going to come and take a look at how to improve our AI score on the breakout game. It turns out there were four primary changes I needed to make in order to get to that game-breaking strategy I showed you just a second ago. The first change was changing the target update frequency from 10,000 to be divided by the number of environments. It turns out that in the code of the original paper, the target update frequency is measured in the number of environment steps and not in the number of parameter updates. Since we have this many environments taking a step in between each parameter update, we have to divide the target update frequency by that number of environments. The second change was the learning rate. I experimented with a few different learning rates and found satisfactory results from 5e-5. The third change was to use the breakout no frame skip dash v4 environment instead of the regular breakout dash v0 we used in the last video. This is the environment they used in the original paper and doesn't introduce stochasticity into the transitions. The fourth change was very simply to set this parameter scale values equals true inside of the make Atari DeepMind function. Inside of this function, there's already an environment wrapper which will scale the values of the observation in between 0 and 1, rather than 0 to 255 as they were previously. Now let's take a look at the tensor board graphs for a few of the experiments that I did. So we can see here the first experiment where I achieved a maximum reward of somewhere around 6.7. And then we have the second experiment, which got a little bit higher, maximum reward somewhere around 8.6. The third experiment was where things started to get exciting, and we got a maximum reward somewhere around 15. Now I hadn't actually watched this play, so I was still disappointed with this, and I thought it was scoring somewhere around 75 on each complete game. So I continued running experiments. We have a second one, which is the same as the red one, and once I saw that it was getting similar results, I canceled that. We have the fifth experiment where I lowered the learning rate way down to 1e-5, and it looks like it kept improving, but it was just taking way too long, so I ended up turning that one off. And then we had the final experiment, which I ran even longer than the third experiment and achieved a lower score. At this point, I actually watched it play the game, and I realized that this average reward is misleading, and the AI was scoring way higher than I expected. So now let's take a moment and watch it play on fast forward. Now we can see the AI made short work of the game. It broke almost all of the squares and only lost one life. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to learn more about AI, remember to like and subscribe. In the next video, we're going to be going over how to implement the double DQN improvement to the DeepQ Learning Network and hopefully see this score improve even more. After that, we'll be covering even more reinforcement learning algorithms. Thanks for watching and have a great day.